Okay, so today's lesson is on scientific notation. Um, the reason why we use scientific notation is so that if, we're, if we have very large numbers or very small numbers, we want to be able to express them in a condensed method. Um, so for example, if I have a number that's like 0 0.0000529 inches, that number uh, would be difficult to tell somebody over the phone. Okay, if you're reporting a number to someone, I mean, how do you, how would you say this over the phone to someone? I mean, that'd be, you know, 529, you know, billionths or something like that. Um, I guess you could do that. Or we could write it in a different way so it's easier to express. So, and then we don't have to write all these zeros. And to do that, we're just going to move the decimal to the right of the first non-zero digit. So if this is our decimal and this is our first non-zero digit, we want to get it to the right of that into that position. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to move the decimal point as we go. So our number would then be 5.29 and then times some exponent um, multiplier. And in this case, it's going to be times 10 to the what exponent? Okay, if we did, I heard 7. If we put a 7 there, is 10 to the 7th a very big number or a very small number? A big number. So if I take 5.29 and multiply it by a very big number, it makes it even bigger. But this number here was smaller than this, so I need to multiply by a negative exponent. So in this case, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It would be a negative 7 in this case. And then we put the units out on the end so that the unit does not go next to the 5.29, it goes outside of the multiplier. Does that make sense? So let's look at the examples on the notes. So the first one there is uh, 365,611. And what do the instructions say in the notes? It says to write to the proper scientific notation to three significant digits, okay? So if we're moving the decimal point, the decimal is out here, we're going to move it one, two, three, four, five spots. So what number are we going to record on our paper? 3.6, and then this is a five, but there's a six after it, so we have to round up. So it's 3.66 times 10 to the fifth. Okay with that? Pretty straightforward. So then you have some problems there below that you can be looking at. Let's look at going the other way. So look at the um, underneath uh, where it says express the following numbers in normal notation to three significant digits. So it gives us an example of 1.055 times 10 to the sixth. Now a lot of people get confused on which way to move the decimal. Well again, this is where we use our brain. 10 to the sixth, big number or small number? Big number. So this one is going to get bigger. So which way do I have to move the, nu the decimal to get a bigger number than one? Correct. Correct. So I'm going to move it this way. I'm going to move it sp six spots. So one, two, three, and then I have to put in zeros. There's four, five, six. So my number is going to be one, zero, five, five, zero, zero, zero. However, again, what do the instructions tell us to do? Three significant digits, right? So let's look at our significant digits. Significant or not? Significant. How about the zero? Significant. Five? Yes. So one, two, three, and the five is after that, so we're going to round this to one, zero, six, zero, 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 zero. And again, you can put in your commas, so we get one million sixty thousand. Let's look at the next example. 4.553 times 10 to the negative third. Again, 10 to the negative third is actually what number? You guys know negative exponents? 10 to the negative third is? Yeah, 1 over 10 to the third, which is 1 1,000. OK? So we're multiplying 4.5 times 1 1,000, which is going to make 4 a smaller number. So we're going to move the decimal point 
this direction. One, two, three. So I have zero point zero zero four five. Again, three digits. These zeros are placeholders. Four, five, my next number is a five followed by a three. So it remains a five. Questions on that? Pretty straightforward? All right. Let's look at factor label now. So what we're doing in factor labels, we're just converting from one unit to another typically. Um, sometimes we use things like density to go from a mass to a volume. Uh, sometimes we can use a concentration in chemistry to go from uh, one substance to another. But essentially we're converting units. We're usually not changing the quantity, we're just changing how we represent it. So instead of saying, you know, six inches, I can use factor label or unit conversions to convert it to centimeters and get, you know, 15.3 centimeters. And I didn't change the length, I just changed the way that I'm, you know, what I'm calling it. Okay? So let's look at our first example. It gives us a bunch of uh, conversion factors, some that you have to memorize and some that uh, will be given to you. Uh, the first example is converting four gallons to milliliters. So always to set up, uh, let's start on the far left hand margin here and I'm going to put in question mark what I'm looking for. Okay, so always start with a question mark and what you're looking for in terms of your units equals and then what you're given and we're given 4.00 gallons now do we know a conversion between gallons and milliliters well, if we look up above I don't see any milliliters to gallon conversions but I do see a gallon to quart and a quart to liter and then a liter to milliliter. So right here, this says that there's a thousand millimeters in one meter. That's the same thing as a thousand milliliters in one liter. So this is a, a metric prefix. So let's look at our steps. We're going to put gallons on the bottom so that our units cancel. Gallons divided by gallons will cancel and I'm going to convert gallons to quarts. And there are four quarts in a gallon. I'm just using this conversion factor here and setting it up. Again, gallons divided by gallons, they cancel unit-wise. So now I'm left with quarts. What can I convert quarts to? To liters, good. So quarts to liters. So quarts goes on the bottom, so it cancels the unit on top. And what's my conversion factor for that? There are 1.06 quarts for every one liter. And then I'm going to convert, and again, units cancel, quarts and quarts. And then I'm in liters, but I want milliliters. And there are 1,000 milliliters in a liter. And then your liter units cancel. So if I use my calculator, and type this in. Here's how I'm going to enter this in my calculator. I'm going to multiply all the numbers on the top and divide by all the numbers on the bottom. So if I look here, I'm going to take 4 times 4 times 1,000. Hit my equals key and then divide by 1.06. And this is the number I get in my calculator. Is this what I'm going to write on my paper? No. I'm going to look at my numbers and look how many significant digits I need to keep out of this. So if I look here, 4.00 has how many significant digits? Three, right? Those zeros are final zeros with a decimal. They're significant. Three, four to one, infinite, good. One to 1.06, it tells me right here is three significant digits. So I've got three, three, infinite, and these are infinite. So my least number is three. So when I look at my calculator, I'm going to round to the third digit. So in this case, it's 150 or 15,094. I'm going to round to 15,100. 
or I could write it in scientific notation as 1.51 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. Everybody see where you can move the decimals there? So 1.51 times 10 to the 4th milliliters, or you could write 15,100. Either one is acceptable.